Hello, Outport Easter, Outport Outdoors, everything fishing. And today we are going to be tying some spawn sacks. Just your regular old spawn sacks, the best bait known to man for steelhead, in my opinion. Uh, sometimes I go out with some spawn sacks and it's like almost cheating. It's, it's, it's just so good. It's such a wonderful bait and most people know about it. So I'm gonna just be running you through how I tie my spawn sacks. It's a very simple way to do it. Uh, I, I like to tie them early in the season. Right now, uh, the fish are just running up, so I like to have everything ready. So during the rest of the season, I'm all good. So when I sit down, I try to tie at least 100 or so. A lot of the times I, I'm even sharing with the people I'm with, so um, I'm known as that guy. Which, if you tie sacks, you know, don't be greedy, you know, share with your friends. So there's only four things you actually need to tie these sacks. So the four things you need are the, are the mesh to tie them in, which this is made by Atlas. And uh, not because I'm, I'm specifically um, brand loyal to that brand, it's just very readily available in my area. I can get it at Walmart, I can get it at Cabela's. I can get it at the local shops here. You need your eggs, whatever you're tying. You need, this is called magic thread. Um, if you search magic thread, this will pop up. And it's just some elastic thread to keep it, to keep the tops tied on there. And I'm gonna show you how I use that in a second. And then this is the optional part. These are bait sack floaters. So. They're pretty much just small little foam balls that are going to keep your bait off of the bottom. You don't actually have to use these, but if you're if you're running a certain type of a rig, they're super effective. If you could see on some of these in here, I got those tied in with them. And if you're tying a certain a certain type of rig, they're they're really they're really awesome. But these are optional. You don't actually need these. So let's get into it and show you the way I tie these sacks. Okay, so now I've brought you a little bit closer to my work area. So I have my little area that I'm gonna put the ones that are already done. And I'm gonna do kind of an assembly line type of tying area. So first I'm gonna put out the mesh. So I'm gonna put out a bunch of mesh, pretty much all the mesh that fits. Okay, so now that I got all the mesh out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take my eggs and I'm just going to distribute the amount that I prefer in each mesh. Okay, now that I got everything the way I want it distributed, which right now I want my egg sacks to be a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm making some of them around like that size, then I'm making some that are around that size. So pretty much what I'm going for is about maybe a nickel type size. Um, in the beginning of the season, I like to throw a little bit of a bigger one uh, because these creek chubs are, are in the masses right now. So, you know, you'll, you have a better chance of, of keeping your bait for longer and not catching like a ton of chubs. So if you could see what I'm doing here, which you probably couldn't, so let me start over. So I'm picking it up from the two edges and then I fold it over for it so it makes like a triangle shape. And then I'm picking the other edge up and the other edge up. And what I do is I kind of take it in my fingers and I kind of twist it like this until it gets nice and tight. Not too tight, because you don't want to just make it bust, right? So then I take my magic thread, which is just elastic thread, and I'm gonna put it here, and I'm just gonna twist it around about 10 to 12 times. And then at the end of that, I grab the edge, the um, I grab it by the top there, and I just pull and the magic thread will break. And this is what you will be left with. Right there, a perfect egg sack. All you have to do to complete it is grab your scissors, which I usually do this at the end, but for the purpose of this video, 
I'll do, I'll do it right now. Usually I have a giant stack over here in this corner. So I have a giant stack of these, just full of them. And then at the end, when all of this is done, I'll take all of them, every single one, and I will cut it right over that, that thread and boom, that's what you'll get. That's what you'll have left. So I'll usually have this stack here and I'll just cut them all and then make my stack of my completed egg sacs at the end. And it's that simple. It's, it's not too bad. It is a little bit time consuming. It is a little bit tedious, but when you're out on the water and you have a ton of them, I mean, it's really invaluable. So there's the finished product. There's my one chartreuse run that I just tied. And then there's the pink ones. And soon there's gonna be a ton of white and I'm gonna finish tying these, which I like to tie the row. It's, it's messier, but the thing is when it gets in the water, if you're in murky water, that stuff shines and it, as soon as you, as soon as that stuff like literally goes down into the water, you start to see all of the fragrant fragrance and all of the, the cure just ooze out into the water. So those first couple casts are usually when you're gonna get your bite because this stuff is stinky. So um, I actually really like using that stuff for, for steelhead and tying bags of that for steelhead. So let me show you just one more thing. I'm gonna show you how I go about tying with, um, with the float, the float balls there. See, there's your finished product. Just beautiful, perfect coho spawn sacks. Let's go, let's go ahead and show you the, um, the little floater balls there. So to put the floater balls in, I don't use many. Um, I usually use no more than five usually three to five. And I don't really trip on the color. I mean, I just put whatever color I grab. You can buy these in just, in just, in just one color if you, if you prefer one color, like if you want it to match. Whatever you have confident, confidence in. I say that in all my videos. Uh, fishing is like, a, it, it, a lot of it depends on confidence and what you're confident in doing. So if it gives you confidence to match the color and you feel in your heart that the fish bite when the color matches, you know, Go ahead and do that. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna put those balls in there, and you're gonna go about the same process. You're gonna you're gonna fold it till it makes a triangle, then you're gonna fold it and you're gonna fold it again. And what this does too is something really special. It adds flash to the to the presentation as well. So if you look at that presentation now, let me take my magic magic thread. it adds flash to that presentation and it makes it flow. So now you have, there's your presentation. You got that flash there and this is gonna flow. So let's say you have a really, a really snaggy bottom and you wanna float this under a float instead of the regular eggs, that's completely fine. In, um, in tough water, it's gonna be more buoyant or the way I like to fish these is if the bite is tough and I'm not getting my bite on a float, usually I'll switch to this and I'll run almost like, if you're familiar with like a catfish rig, I'll run like, like that type of rig. So I'll have this on the bottom and then I'll have a weight, um, maybe a foot above it. And then you cast it in and this is just gonna sit suspended in the water column in the strike zone. So you're gonna have this in the strike zone just sitting there. So it's gonna be nice. If, you're, if your current is heavy and your weight is a little bit lighter, this is just gonna float down the water column. So this is actually a really, really good way to tie your sacks. Um, I recommend having both. I recommend like um, the, more, the more options you have, the better. But this is a really good way to tie your sacks as well with those little float balls. So guys, just wanted to make a quick video on how I do this. I said I was going to. So um, yeah, and uh, when I when I catch my when I catch a, a nice female steelhead that's not super big and 
that's just an egg wagon. I'll show you guys the process of how I, um, I harvest the fish, take the eggs out, cure the eggs, and get them all nice. Uh, the, the video, the first video I ever posted on the channel, actually, um, that female had some good eggs in it, and that's what got me through the whole season last year. So just one fish can get you through for a very long time, especially if you catch a king, like if you catch a big king, it'll get you through forever. But like I said, guys, I, uh, that was actually a pretty small fish and I do share, I share with my dad and a lot of my friends. So I love making these videos for, um, for newer anglers. And I actually have a lot of cool things in the works that's coming. I'm not an expert by any means, but uh, I get it done and I catch fish. So if I, if I could share a little bit with you guys, that's cool. So that's it. If you like the video and you want more, please subscribe, uh, hit that like button so it gets to more people and leave a comment below if there's something you, you would like to see. If you don't subscribe, I won't hold it against you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, tight lines. God bless. Have a good one.